Hi everybody, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A where I mark a former dive instructor or now HSC media diver, do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. So if you do have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video, use the Ask Mark hashtag and it will get your question and yourself featured in an up and coming video. In the meantime, I do like to type out an answer if I have the time. The community as well, they do like to answer your questions. Uh, so if you are part of the scuba diving community, you are subscribed to the channel um, have a look down in the comment section underneath this video if there are any unanswered questions by all means let them know uh, today I'm answering a question from Asho23 about headaches after diving So Asho says, hey Mark, I just got back from a dive on the XHMAS Brisbane and had a headache after. After a bit of research, it seems like it was caused by CO2 buildup from my breathing. Any tips on how to improve this? So if the headache is 100% hypercapnia and you did have a buildup of carbon dioxide, then the best prevention is big deep breaths to flush out as much as your respiratory dead airspace as possible. Um, gas density may start to become an issue on the Brisbane, which has a maximum depth of about 27 meters, but that's where you're diving really down deep and the gas starts to get a bit thicker, so it's a bit harder for your body to move it around. So adjusting your dialer breath would be beneficial as well um, if you have that built into your uh, your regulator second stage the deeper down you go it's better to actually open up the uh, the dialer breath to make it a little bit easier to inhale and exhale um but yeah my my first port of call whenever you feel a little tingle of anything um something mm, that doesn't feel quite right is to contact someone like divers alert network there's a phone number where you can get in contact with them and uh, and just have a chat with one of them they, they are diver medics so they know all the little uh, like signs and symptoms uh, and they'll be able to like discuss with you what it could be uh, and what action you should take next um, and a headache after a dive can be a lot of different things it can be like a sinus headache because uh, like, like build up anything from like a reverse block to um to just yeah your your sinuses just like bending and flexing with the change in pressure if you haven't been equalizing um you can get a headache from that tension headache because yeah you're going through a lot and you're doing all these kind of things uh carbon monoxide if your gas mix uh, was contaminated co um, can cause headaches, um, a toxicity headache uh, from any of the gases that you're breathing down there. Could be decompression sickness headache. It could be dehydration that you just hadn't um, been um, been drinking enough beforehand, and you become dehydrated because the gas that we're breathing is very dry. Can dehydrate us. We're often diving in warm climates as well, so it's very important to stay as hydrated as possible. Um, and yes, carbon dioxide, you can get a carbon dioxide headache. Um, so it's really hard to just say it's definitely hypercapnia. Um, it could be a lot of different things and I'm not sure what um, signs and symptoms uh, led you to believe that it is 100% um, like carbon dioxide buildup. But yes, if it is, CO2, uh, CO2 buildup and it is hypercapnia, hyper being too much and then capnia being um, uh, CO2 carbon dioxide. It mainly comes down to the dead air spaces and you see this in snorkeling and um, oh, we get it. It was, um, uh, it, it is an issue with the, uh, the full face snorkel masks as well. As soon as they came out, there was a big issue with CO2 buildup because the, the airways weren't uh, effective at shifting we call it the dead air the air that you're <sighs> exhaling it's it's higher in carbon dioxide is a little bit lower in oxygen and when you're you're exhaling it it's it's just used gas you just want to get rid of it problem is with our body physiology is that the lungs first of all the lungs never completely deflate because that's just your lungs collapsing. You always have a residual um, 
uh, volume left inside of your lungs so that your yeah your lungs don't collapse in on themselves so you still have some of that old dead gas still inside you also have your windpipe um, because that's always open that still has some air and then when you add something like a snorkel onto the end of it when you exhale this is still full like to there of sorry to there of like expired breathed out gas when you then inhale the first thing that's filling up your lungs is that dead air that you've already tried to exhale um, so if you breathe really shallow then chances are you're just moving that dead air backwards and forwards and the carbon dioxide level is just increasing and then you're just breathing it back in so to combat that big deep breaths to really flush it out exhale as much as you can to get rid of as much of that dead air as possible and then replace it with a nice big lung full of fresh fresh air from the next dive um, whereas if you just breathe at like the top of your lungs or right at the bottom of your lungs then yeah you're just kind of moving that dead air and it's not really going anywhere you're just breathing the same lungful of gas or not the entire lungful but a portion of that lungful um, and that's the best way to get rid of as much of the co2 as possible just breathe a good normal um, breath of air um, if you breathe really shallow then yeah you're just breathing in that uh, that dead air space it's mainly a problem with snorkels uh, because they do extend that dead air space to include the, uh, the volume of the snorkel. Uh, with regulators, less of an issue because yeah, when you exhale, it just vents out. There is an argument that the, the internal volume of the second stage is added dead air space. Um, but yeah, as long as you just have a deep breath every so often to... Uh, to really flush it out that's the best way to uh, to prevent carbon dioxide from uh, from building up and getting that headache but as i say could have been caused by a lot of other things everything from yeah dehydration to sinus um, tension headaches um yeah there's a lot of other causes of headache underwater and or sorry after a dive my first port of call is always to, uh, to contact someone like dan just so that you can they're going to ask the right questions basically to um, to either dispel your fear and just go chances are you're just dehydrated have some water monitor yourself um, or just say right just go on oxygen go on pure oxygen just breathe um, some of that or the highest nitrox mix that you can find that will help to uh, to flush out any carbon dioxide um, or whatever it is. Nine times out of ten, oxygen is the right answer to uh, to breathe um, in a uh, in a diving incident. Um, but yeah, that's usually my first port of call. If it is 100% hypercapnia, uh, yeah, then it's your breathing habits. Just need to uh, breathe nice deep breaths during the dive. Yeah, hypercapnia is uh, important because actually your body, uh, your oxygen level doesn't determine how much or like when to breathe. It's actually your carbon dioxide level in your bloodstream that tells your body to, oh, you, you need to breathe. Um, so that's why you tend to hyperventilate. You breathe too much when your CO2 levels are too high inside of your bloodstream. Your body says, oh no, we got too much CO2. I need to breathe more to, to flush it out. So you tend to hyperventilate when you get uh, it's like hypercapnia. Um, so um, it is more of an issue with rebreathers. Um, we have the, uh, the the scrubber units, which is made to scrub out as much of the CO2 as possible because we're just rebreathing the um, almost the same lungful every single breath. Um, if we just had a, a closed loop that just circulated, then yeah, your CO2 levels would gradually rise with every exhale. Uh, so we need to scrub out that co2 and in some cases you can um, sort of work it if you haven't packed your scrubber quite quite right that it, it finds a, a way around and through so it doesn't get scrubbed up uh, or scrubbed out so and um, and then yeah your co2 levels start to increase 
Um, so it's a bit more of an issue on, uh, on rebreathers. Open circuit, yeah, you've got less of a dead air space, but the main thing to, uh, to prevent it is just normal <sighs> breaths of air <sighs> every now and then, just to give it a good flush out and, uh, and replace it with some good old fashioned fresh air. Uh, any other questions, by all means, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Use the AskMark hashtag. It gets featured in an up and coming video. And of course, remember to head over to our website, scubadivingmag.com. Check out all the awesome things that we do over there, the magazine, different news articles, and uh, equipment reviews as well. And yeah, if you're not subscribed to the channel here on YouTube, please click on that subscribe button. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving. Oh, <laughs> oh,